Heavenly Fathers, we've assembled once again this morning. Lord, many times our hearts are heavy because of what we consider and look upon as being losses. But Lord, uh, we know during these moments is when you're truly the closest to us because we're leaning closer to you. So Heavenly Father, we lift up, we truly lift up Sister Primrose, Sister Cheryl, and Brother David, the entire family, Lord, at the, at the passing and going home of Brother Elbray. We thank you so much for this wonderful man of God who led this church, worked for you through your church. His heart truly was here for you. Well, Heavenly Father, I lift up the family, but I also lift up the church family as a whole at his passing, his going home. Lord, he has left an emptiness, a void in our heart. But Lord, we know that you're here and you will fill it. So may we rejoice in his rejoicing. Lord, also we lift up uh, the Lanier family, Brother Clyde's uh, going home as well. But Lord, we lift up each one, these that have been mentioned, those that are going for surgeries, those who are recovering from surgeries, those who are under doctor's care, those who are resting at home and recovering. Lord, we lift up each one and ask for your healing and strengthening hand upon them. But also, Heavenly Father, our community as a whole, I thank you for the hearts, the desire that we're here yesterday to pray for this community, and I lift them up as well. But Lord, I lift the church up. We have a ministry, your ministry that you provided to us. And Lord, may we truly be dedicated and devoted to doing your work for you right here through this church. I thank you for these two that will be coming later on for baptism. I lift them up and ask for your hand of strengthening and healing upon them, but also their desire to unite with this church. And may they truly be a blessing and we who are currently here will be a blessing to them. But Lord, again, I lift up each one. I thank you, Lord, for these that are here. I thank you for watching over us, continue strengthening us, and we humbly ask it all in Jesus' name and for his name's sake. Amen. Thank you. Have a seat. Uh, well, again, just by way of uh, announcements, uh, in the bulletin for the week's events, we do have community outreach uh, on Tuesday. That more than likely will be postponed because of the funeral uh, services for Brother Elbray right here. Tuesday morning at 11 a.m. We do humbly ask you if you're able to be here. I know there are a lot that do have commitments and are unavoidable, uh, but there will be a, the uh, visitation at Siegler's Monday night. And so uh, we just humbly ask that, you, that you'll be there to, uh, to pay your respects. All right. Anyway, we're going to uh, change our uh, arrangements a little bit. We're going to have the baptism at the end of the service, so don't go away. I'm talking about a two back there. <laughs> but, uh, no, it's, uh, it's Brother Brandon. You're going to have to have a couple extra songs for the end there. Cause, uh, anyway, looking forward to it. Amen, amen. It's always a good thing, amen. Kind of look out and you think, well, where's everybody at? <clears throat> That's what I'm asking. Where's everybody at? I know that there are many sick, and I know the circumstances in many cases. But uh, I thank you for these two that are coming forward. And I thank you, church, for your willingness to continue receiving. There are churches that will not do that, and that's not a church. We have a heart to reach out and, and draw more to the Lord in building the kingdom of God. Amen. I'll hush. Your turn. All right, uh, next week I will be bringing, hopefully, if I can get it together, we filmed it from a cell phone, but just some little clips of what went on last night at the Winter Jam. Um, it was loud. <laughs> it was very loud, but I will let you know that um, I will be liking, I would like to go back next year with the youth and hopefully we'll have more going. Um, but even some of you adults would really enjoy and not necessarily maybe the music because it's pretty loud, but they have like little other places to sit that are further away from the stage. We were right next to it, of course, but um, just to see that there is still hope in this nation with the next generation that's coming up. There was about 30, probably about between 25 to 30,000 kids there jumping and screaming and crying and just praising God. All right, like 
I was like ha like half the night I was in tears. So it was awesome. <laughs> I'll show some videos of just what went on. Just you'll hear me screaming in the background. I mean, not today, but next week I'll show you. You'll hear me screaming in the background, just singing. My voice is gone, and it's funny. I, I sound like a horse, but. <laughs> All right, uh, turn me to number 
Alright, we all are standing. That's me. Got a video song. Should. Let's <laughs> think about the word.
conquered the world. Amen. No video, so it's okay. We just had a video. Turn with me to uh, <clears throat> First John chapter 3. This morning I want us to look at the cleaning. Uh, the series title is for this month is Ourselves. We're looking at ourselves and what we need to worship the king. Uh, he's done so much for us, so now what can we do to honor and worship him? And uh, one thing that we need to do as his children is, is the cleaning and the cleaning of ourselves. 1 John chapter 3, and again, I ask you if you're able to stand at the honor of the reading of the Lord's word. Uh, 1 John chapter 3, beginning in verse 1, just 1, 2, and 3, just begin with, concerning this. And the word of the Lord says, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for your word. And Lord, may this moment be the time where each and every one of us see what we need to do in coming to you completely and, and unashamedly. And Lord, those of us who have already and those of us who have and will be giving ourselves to you and accepting you as our Lord and Savior, Lord, you're calling us your sons, the sons of God, and that is a present tense. But Lord, what do we do as your, as your children and as your servants as we go forth and those that are yet to hear? May we be equipped but first, we need to be cleansed of all unrighteousness before you, Lord. And we can only do that by coming to you and asking. But again, Lord, may each one truly receive what they need individually at this, this moment through your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Have a seat. Well, here we see in these first three verses of 1 John chapter 3, we see that there obviously is an experience that each and every one who have already come before the Lord has received. There's an experience. I cannot go and tell you the exact day that I, I was saved. I cannot tell you the exact day. I know that it was on a Saturday, and I know that uh, when I go back in my mind, I think it was in the month of May, 1982. So... Uh, this may, it'll what, be uh, 32 years I've been saved. Half my life. The only regret I have is the first half, <laughs> where I wasn't, and what I, what I did. But anyway, I came to the Lord, and he, he cleansed me of, of my sins because I asked him to, and he, and he is faithful and sure to do just that when we ask. So I had an experience, and I know each and every one of us who have accepted Christ as our Lord and Savior have had that experience of, of seeing him. But you see here in verse 1, we see that there is, there is heaven and there is an honor to this. In verse 1, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us. Can you understand that? Behold that. Listen to that. And experience that. What manner of love the Father has has bestowed upon us that we should be called sons of God. That's an amazing statement right there. I mean, can you understand that? Look, can you understand the manner of love, what that love is and what that love behold, uh, holds within itself? That we, that he's given to us, that we should be called the sons of God, the children of God. Can you fully grasp that, understand that? Therefore, since we are, therefore the world does not know us because it didn't know him. Because you see, Jesus was, was beaten and rejected by the very people he came to witness to. His children, his people, the called people of God. These were the people that the word was given to through Moses. These are the people, the Pharisees, the scribes, the leaders 
the religious leaders of their day who are supposed to be the ones studying and understanding and walking with God. They're the ones who are supposed to know that and give the example, the living example to those people around them. I put a slide up last week, I believe it was, that out of ten people, only one of them is going to read the Bible. The other nine people are going to watch that person who read it. That's the Bible that they're reading. And so here... John is telling us, the Apostle John is saying, look, do you understand what manner of love the Father has given to you, has placed upon you, that now you're children of God, you're his people. Well, when Jesus was rejected again, he was rejected by the very people who were supposed to understand that and who were supposed to be walking as an example to all those people around them, but they weren't doing it. Are we doing it? Are we truly honoring God in our lives? Are we truly living a life that will truly show that and exhibit that to other people? Look at verses 2 and 3 here because here we do see a hope and we see a holiness in it. Verse 2, beloved, now are we the sons of God. That's present tense. Right now. Now. Are we the sons of God? And it does not yet appear what shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he, as he is. That's a hope. You know, the Apostle, John, uh, the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians talks about in the, uh, chapter 13, the very last verse, he says, but now these three remain, talking about the gifts, the gifts that were given to the early church, the first church, because they did not have the written word of God. In the same chapter, he states that, but when that which is come, then this we shall be done away with, and that is, is like this, is the word of God, that. We no longer need all those. It would be great to have those. Everybody, I think, would agree to that. It would be wonderful for us to have people who had that wonderful gift of healing. It would. I mean, any person who had that gift of healing who who was so empowered by God to do that, how many could honestly say they would not go to a cancer ward, who would not go up to the children's hospital and start touching those children to heal them? Instead of, well, you're going to have to come to the meeting and then we'll have it. Now, that's, that's holding it back now. That's not what Jesus did. Jesus walked the streets. And anyone who came to him and were, that acknowledged him they were healed. We don't have that today, unfortunately. He and he only has that power. But these three remain, he says, faith, hope, and love. You see, and here in verse 2, it talks about that hope. We have that hope that one day when he comes back, we're going to be just like him. We won't have these shells of bodies anymore that are plagued with aches and pains and diseases and things. We're going to be like him. Verse 3, and every man that has this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure. That, that's holiness. That's it. In 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1, having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Because this is, that's what this message deals with is the cleansing of ourselves, getting rid of those things that are within us that are holding us back from God, allowing us to free ourselves to truly go out and, and speak out and reach out to people for Jesus. Because you cannot take a filthy cup and put pure water in it and expect someone to want to drink it. Consider that. Because would you, would you want to do that? I mean, here you are thirsty. You're a very thirsty person. And someone takes this cup. It's just absolutely filthy. And they take clean water and pour it in there and they offer it to you. Would you want to take that? It depends on how thirsty you are, I'm sure. But that's definitely not putting forth a good, good image to someone. Because you'd want to think, well, why wouldn't they take time to clean it before they offered it to me? We have to be clean, people, before we can offer the pure living water of Jesus Christ, his love to someone. He doesn't want to be in a, in a filthy vessel 
because he's pure. He's holy. Every man that has this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is holy. So is your experience one of experience where you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you have gone to the Lord and, and asked him to purify you, to clean you of all the sin and unrighteousness that's within you? We have to be clean, cleansed in order to hold pure, the purity of Christ. Because we have to understand that there is an escape. Look at verse 4. I'll read down to verse from 4 to verse 7. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. Now he's still speaking to the beloved, all right, from verse 2. He's still speaking to the church. He's still speaking to those of us who claim Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. So you know that, all right? If you know that, you need to understand that. Verse 6, Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither knoweth him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. Now, I know a lot of people want to kind of... Uh, uh, center on verse 6 whosoever abides in him sinneth not you mean I, I'm a child of God and I, I no longer sin well that's what it applies isn't it no that's not what it's really saying we as long as we're still in these bodies unfortunately we are plagued with sin because it's all around us remember sin as he said previously is the transgression of the law all right. When we are tempted, we want to claim that is sin. Temptation is not sin. Submitting to the temptation is the sin. And unfortunately, there are times when we are confronted with a billboard or, or hearing something or seeing something or someone that we become tempted. And unfortunately, our minds may transgress the law. I have an illustration a little later that hopefully will amplify that and bring better understanding. We have to understand that when we are tempted, when that slightest little moment can bring about the submission to it. In Romans chapter 3, beginning of verse 10, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. See that? There is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher. That's a grave. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. It's just like when someone, you hear on the news, you know, there's a big thing about the New Jersey governor and this bridge or something, and how they're just really trying to find something against him because what was done was wrong and it was illegal. Transgressing of the law. And so if nothing was done that violated the law, there wouldn't have story there. Nothing would have happened. Because it did not transgress the law. But something happened. Something was illegal. Something broke the law. And so when we allow ourselves to transgress the law we become sinners and there's none righteous unfortunately we and of ourselves are unrighteous and it's not this law that's going to save us you can do everything that the law commands and still be unrighteous because we look at the outward God looks at the inward and so if if we've never physically done anything wrong, does that mean that we've ever violated the law? It's the thought that crosses our mind. 
In 1 Corinthians 15, verse 54, So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. It's like there's coming a day when we all shall take off, if you will, these, these physical bodies. And we'll put on the immortality of, of the blessings of God and have that new body that Jesus has. And we will be like him. So there is, there is an escape. But let me ask you this, verse 8 through 10 in our reading, 1 John chapter 3. Are you a slave or are you a saint? Look at it, verse 8. He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. That's why he came. To save us, to destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. In this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is of, uh, whoever doth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. So are you a slave or are you a saint? In Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14 and 15, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had power of death.